Hi, it's uh, Paul Beck within Ottawa. Um, as I walk uh, walk home, um, I want to talk a little bit, have a little chat about methane. Um, you may or may not have been following uh, on the uh, in social media what's been happening, but uh, basically, um, well, let's start at the beginning. Okay, so. Um, a group I'm with, uh, AMEG, Arctic Methane Emergency Group, has been talking to the world about the dangers of methane uh, coming up in the, uh, being released up in the Arctic. Um, in the Arctic there's uh, great uh, temperature amplification because of the declining albedo. In fact, uh, a study just came out recently um, that shows that between 1979 and 2011, the albedo of the Arctic region has declined from 52% to 48%. Um, this decline is mostly from the exponentially declining Arctic sea ice and also the uh, terrestrial snow cover, mostly in the spring. So because those white surfaces are, are um, declining, being replaced by dark ocean surfaces, the albedo of the whole region is dropping, so more energy is being absorbed, more solar energy, um, and as a result the region is heating. So the high arctic is uh, warming at about a rate six to eight times faster than the uh, global average. If you take the overall arctic region, the numbers that you'll see are two times. Uh, but they, you know, that's going down to fairly low latitudes. Um, so the problem is, is that uh, you know, as this warming occurs, the um, methane that is tied up in the sediments in the seafloor, continental shells, mostly the Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf, as measured by many, many Russian teams, and also in the uh, terrestrial permafrost, um, the Yudoma region, etc. Um, the methane is coming up and we've seen an uptick in methane, global levels of methane, since 2007. Um, and uh, if you look at uh, air satellite data, um, you can see where the methane is coming up and when. And uh, we can see that it's coming up from the region. So that's the kicker because methane has a very high global warming potential. So this is what AMEG has been doing uh, with uh, mixed success uh, because the status quo is saying that methane isn't a problem. So, you know, we have climate change deniers. We have also, you know, um, a subgroup of, I would call them methane deniers. I mean, you know, and this includes many, many powerful bodies in science. Um, if you look at the media interviews on methane, um, David Archer is a go-to person. Gavin Smith, Real Climate, um, are people that um, are often interviewed regarding methane. The IPCC AR5, which was out late last year, 2013, um, basically has all the modeling saying that methane is not going to come up significantly it's not going to be a problem. And one of the things that they base that on is that they say that the Arctic has been warmer than it is now in the recent past, perhaps even in the early Holocene thermal maximum, um, and other times perhaps, and the methane didn't come up then, so why should we worry about it now? Well, we're measuring large increases in methane coming up. Um, the Russians are collecting all kinds of data. So the models, are, a lot of the models are slab models. They show that it takes a long time for heat to go into the sediments. Um, therefore, you know, methane is not going to be coming up. But we're measuring it coming up. We're seeing, you know, methane um, emissions causing sinkholes in Siberia, etc. Anyway, you know about this stuff. So anyway, um, what happened a couple weeks ago is the Royal Society had a meeting um, about the Arctic, um, you know, data, models, and uh, about, there were talks on methane. And the talks on methane, in particular by Gavin Smith, um, downplayed the previous talk by 
Peter Wadhams, a respected ice scientist who's been on nuclear submarines, been on, he's been to the Arctic on numerous missions, has I think 300 publications and uh, you know it was so bad in fact that uh, you know when the when Smith apparently I wasn't there but I heard when he brought up the term methane you know uh, he encouraged people to laugh and you know there was a lot of twittering behind the scenes attacking um, uh, what Peter Wadhams was saying and he was you know it could have been face-to-face -face stuff but instead of that it was tweeting behind um, somebody's back um, trying to you know sort of make fun of etc so so that's one issue and the Russians weren't invited to the conference to defend the attacks against them at the conference or to present their work prevent present their work um, and they were really annoyed at this so they put together a letter and sent it to the organizers in fact they asked the Royal Society to withhold on the bulletin until uh, their data was shown and they were able to defend the accusation against their work. Um, and, uh, you know, there were also tweets saying, well, it's after the fact, the conference was two weeks ago, how is this important? I mean, people just don't get that, they just don't understand the precautionary principle. Um, if there's any chance that AMEG and the Russians, and it turns out, just today I came across a paper by Lawrence Livermore National Labs. Now this is a lot, the U.S. government lab that is look, that, that was responsible for developing the uh, atomic bomb uh, and the uh, Manhattan Project programs and so on. It's a big, it's it's a big deal this lab. And there's a paper from 2012 where they look at the risk of methane coming up and they also look at um, possible methane mitigation measures. How do you remove methane from the atmosphere once it's come up or how do you prevent it from coming up? And they're looking at things like, or they looked at things like, and they probably still are, um, you know, how do you cool the Arctic to keep the methane in place, which has been AMEG's platform for three years. You know, this is something we need to do or we're going to head to a different planet. Uh, because methane uh, uh, coming up in quantity will change the planet. You know, on a, on a 10 year time scale or 20 year time scale, the global warming potential is 86 times that of CO2. On a few year time scale, it's more like 150 times. And if a, if a burst comes up, then it's 150 times number that's the important number. So. The Lawrence Livermore, the U.S. government national labs, is actually corroborating what AMEG has been saying for three years and also what the Russians have been saying. Um, so one has to ask what is going on? Why are there all these methane deniers, in quotes, um, in the mainstream scientific community? It just, uh, it doesn't make sense to me. The onus is on them to explain their position in light of these other publications that are coming out. It's on the IPCC to assess methane. What we need is a global um, conference on methane in the Arctic and sea ice decline and snow cover decline but the the primary thing being methane what is the actual risk or likelihood of large emissions of methane coming up because it will change our planet entirely if it does come up so the idea of mainstream science scientists some anyway um, ridiculing those of us, like Peter Wadhams, AMEG, myself, as being outliers, just does not make any rational sense whatsoever. So, thank you for listening to uh, this rant. I just had to uh, uh, kind of get this out uh, at the moment. So, and also, I owed uh, people 
a uh, video. Um, I haven't done any for a while. Okay, thank you.